Hey guys, I hope that you guys are doing fine. This is going to be a short video. It's going to be about uh, configuring the SCCM client custom settings and then deploying it to the desired uh, collection. This is the part 11 of the SCCM uh, lab series that I started a little while ago. If you are new to my channel, I'm BB, a software engineer who loves to share the knowledge. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe it so that you could get the notifications uh, of all my future uh, videos. Let's move to the SCCM machine and uh, get this started. Thanks. So I'm just gonna log into uh, SCCM01 that I created. I believe it was uh, part three of this series. If you want to start from the beginning, and I do strongly, uh, strongly do suggest that you do start from that. I have included the link in the description of this video. You could start from there. Uh, that would help you basically get each step that I went through while creating this home lab. Launch the SCCM console. There is an update uh, that I actually did over this weekend. I'm not gonna do anything right now. I'm just gonna move it. Up. So to do uh, the uh, SCCM. Uh, Client settings, just go to admin, then uh, click on uh, client settings. So here you would see that there are some that are already kind of deployed uh, uh, and they are the default setting. And if you just want to look what is in it, you could kind of right click on it and get the properties. And as you could see, there are so many different ones uh, that are a set up uh, uh, for, for, for each uh, uh, settings uh, you could see you could just select the setting and then go on the right hand side and see each one what each setting is about uh, the best way is to just maybe just Google about uh, uh, SCCM settings and for each setting then you could kind of get the description about it because if I start going through each one of them it would like really be a very long video and I think it would not be helpful and you're not gonna gain too much <clears throat> out of that. So these are the default settings and the way it works is, <clears throat> excuse me, the higher the number, the later it would be applied. So or let's say that the next setting that I am going to create the, pro uh, uh, create the setting, whatever the name that I'm gonna give it, in this case, uh, uh, I will uh, make it simple. So I'm going to try to call it uh, maybe uh, updates, like a Windows update uh, settings. Uh, those are the ones that uh, would basically kind of a driving factor of the settings for Windows update, like how the machine needs to reboot, a uh, couple of things here and there, how the patches needs to go. So for the priority, I'm going to give that one maybe one or two. What that means that if that setting, the one that I'm trying to create, is already in the default because it's going to be there. I know if, 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 you, if I go back into the properties and if I go, this is the one that I'm going to configure. I'm going to configure this one for you guys and I'll show you how to do that one step by step. And then I'm also config, going to configure a computer restart. So these two things I'm going to set in the custom ones. So if you look at this one, uh, so any kind of changes, I'm going to make the basically changes in, 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 in these settings because uh, these are not the one that I want uh, or I desire for, for this lab purpose or even uh, for, for education purpose for you too. So I'm going to make some changes on, on, on these settings for that custom setting, the one that I'm going to create and I am going to give the priority to those as one. What that it would do is that it's even though these settings are already deployed to all of those machines and, and they, they get deployed the minute uh, the SCCM client is uh, installed, those settings are the one they are going to kind of overwrite it and then take over. Hope, hope, hope it makes sense. If not, then you could just leave uh, 
any questions that you have it leave it in the comment section and i'll be more than happy to answer each one of you uh, your questions so to create a new custom setting just right click and create a custom uh, settings and by the way you could create the settings for the devices and then you could also create the settings for the users too uh, for this purpose uh, for, for this video i'm not going to show you how to create the uh, for the users they are i mean the creation process is the same it's just the whatever the configuration within those settings are different so if you want me to create another uh, video for uh, users i'll be more than happy to do if i get like maybe 10 15 uh, requests so for this uh, uh, create uh, new settings and uh, all you gotta do is just go and uh, look for whichever setting that you are interested in uh, as i mentioned uh, i am interested in only two for this video purpose one is for software updates and the reason why i want to do this one is in the previous video i show you how to deploy a sccm uh, update uh, actually previous two videos one was uh, about the baseline and then the other one was the future updates and automatic deployment route so i want to control them a little bit more in a better manner that's why i'm going to deploy this one uh, and then the computer restart behavior these two so as you do the check mark on them you're gonna see that they are kind of uh, getting added to the list so it's, it's just like and if you want them to be removed from the list simply uh, uncheck and then it's gonna get removed so first one I'm just gonna go and uh, name it Windows update you could put uh, uh, anything here that whatever that you desire windows uh, update uh, custom settings you could put any anything and these are kind of notes for your reminder now uh, select one of them which uh, in this case I'm gonna do software update and now here you could uh, select those settings so I want to enable software update on the client yes which is default back the next one is software update scan schedule. This is when the client on that uh, machine that, that this one is deployed to is going to scan if there are any new updates uh, available. Uh, so it, it runs an update scan on, on that. So seven days to me is uh, way too relaxed because uh, let's say that if there was uh, some kind of emergency patch that came through uh, and you like a wanna cry that came through and you want to uh, patch those machines like super quick now if you don't have this setting uh, if, if you have as default which is a seven days what it would do and, and let's say uh, that machine was scanned yesterday what happens is the next scan that would happen on that machine for software updates is going to be after seven days from yesterday and you don't want it to be that long every company has a policy how soon uh, they want to run the scan uh, i have seen uh, some environment where it scans hourly that is uh, to me is overkill too and it puts a lot of stress on the uh, sccm database uh, it all depends on the environment to environment Ideally, I would say probably one day. Every day is kind of a good number to start. It doesn't cause so much stress on the uh, management point server. Uh, and it does uh, kind of go and scan every day too. So that setting is good. Uh, now schedule the deployment re-evaluation. This is uh, basically what happens is, let's say that you deployed something uh, and you want to rerun that scan after the deployment and in the previous video that's why there is a check mark during the deployment too where you could uh, actually uh, enforce within that deployment that once the patches are installed go back and uh, rerun the evaluation but for any reason this is a good idea to just put this one i would say probably on a one day uh, cadence too so just in case if something happened and that you did deploy it 
uh, and it needs to rescan it uh, about the evaluation then it it's gonna go every day to versus it's gonna uh, wait for the whole seven days and uh, next one is when any software update deployment deadline is reached install all other software updates I would uh, check this one yes period of time for which all pending deployment with a deadline in this time uh, will also be installed just leave everything default this one default uh, don't worry uh, I'm rest of all of the stuff I'm just going to uh, to leave as uh, uh, default uh, this one is kind of tricky yeah I have seen uh, some environments they turn on enable the third party uh, software updates uh, let's say because uh, you are gonna start seeing more and more like Adobe is a uh, one of the example that the patches are kind of starting to come bundled into them or if there is uh, other kind of patches that you are using and trying to deploy the patches and managing the patches through the SCCM, this is for that. Now, um, you it's, it's a very tricky, the reason why I'm saying it because you might have different kind of a time schedule uh, on those. Uh, so if uh, the environment dictates that it's okay for all the patches to patch at the same time, then it's okay to go and just select this one and do yes. But if it is not, uh, then don't do it. I, su I suggest you should not do it because you could create another uh, uh, policy and then, then maybe just send that one just for that one, that one, and then try to patch those critical machines, the one that need to be patched with Microsoft patches. You could uh, kind of go to that route. And then this one right here, computer restart. This is actually a restart behavior. Um, this is about the dialogues, like how uh, SCCM is going to communicate with uh, uh, with the end user. I'm going to show you a quick uh, sample. I think I have downloaded it over here. Yeah, right here. So, oh, if you look at this, this is the top one. Um, let, let me go back. It says display a temporary notification to the user that indicates that inter, uh, interval before the user is logged off. So this is the one that will show and that can give you the option of whatever the options that you are going to do with this message. And then uh, that, that's set up to, to 90 minutes. And then this one display a dialog box that the user uh, cannot close, which is, uh, it has a timer on it. And uh, basically, yes, uh, user can kind of minimize it, but it's the, the clock is gonna keep running. And once the clock is gonna run out of the time, whatever the time is set up, which is, uh, oops, I'm sorry. This time, this one is like, it's, it's gonna give about 15 minutes. You could increase this time to longer. I believe this one uh, in the sample window. Yeah, it's like one hour. 18 minutes away so probably they are giving the user about one hour and 30 minutes i have seen uh, about the good time could be between one to two hour uh, but again that depends on environment environment some uh management are okay to reboot even within 30 minutes but uh, 30 minutes usually user do complain about it oh i couldn't save my work it was not enough time, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So if you are a CCM admin, maybe have some meetings before you make any kind of changes and get the proper approvals and then go accordingly with that. I am going to leave this one for this lab purpose, just as is, and just simply click OK. And as you could see, the system actually gives the property itself to this one. You could change this property uh, 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 by going to yeah it's I think once it's deployed then you could just do increase or decrease the property right here the option would uh, kind of get wind up getting available right here it's not right now deployed so that's why it's not joined so uh, that's uh, about uh, creating the new one so next thing I'm gonna do and this one if you look at it 
it's not deployed to any a collection so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this one just like deploying a kind of a, almost like a uh, other deployments so uh, I will do it to only because this is for Windows I should have actually I'm gonna go back and rename this one just to get a better understanding I'm gonna add Windows update dash for workstations and then I can create one for the servers now I'm gonna deploy this right click and select deploy um, I will go and do it to all workstations production okay that's it right there so now oh and this one was by the way not deployed too so I'm gonna do this one this is already there so now whenever it will go out so for Windows uh, update, it's, this is, I think I changed the timings on these. So the settings on those clients are going to be uh, dictated with the higher priority, which is uh, the number one, and uh, it will go with these. And I also want you to keep in mind one thing too, which I was actually trying to read something and it came across and I thought it would be good to share. Always remember that these settings are on the local machine. If you are setting any kind of, like deploying any kind of uh, client settings, and there is a person on that machine that is that has the admin rights, they can change it. Which means that if there are any kind of settings that you are trying to deploy through a GPO, GPO would take over on these settings. And the reason why uh, I wanted to mention this to you that let's say that because there, there are cert certain settings where you could go and uh, make the changes where the SCC or WSS server is. Uh, uh, we need to dig for those and I can I can share with, with you guys later sorry I don't remember on top of it but there is one setting out here that dictates where the WSS server is now if you have a WSS server set up somewhere in the GPO settings it will take over and you could potentially run into the problems if that server is pointing to something different than your SCCM server so just, just do a little bit read up on it if you are trying to have these kind of problems in one of your environment that, hey, I don't know why uh, every time when the patches are coming through, they are coming through from a different uh, uh, WSS server. It is that your, your configuration uh, is uh, playing with you that even though you are looking on the SCCM side, it's showing like, hey, this is, uh, uh, this is my setting. You could take all snapshots and send it to everybody but if somebody has set it up in the GPO GPO always take over on the letting uh, or on the, the, the local setting just just keep that in mind with this uh, I think uh, uh, this concludes this uh, uh, this part of the video I hope that uh, you like it if you have any questions please feel free to to ask in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Next video, uh, I'm gonna start with how to deploy the operating system. Uh, that's a very interesting. And if you are more towards the imaging side of uh, the environment or the company that you are working with, that would help you a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how you could deploy the Windows and it's gonna be Windows 10, uh, about four different ways, four different uh, categories. So thank you so much, uh, wherever you are, have a wonderful day or night. Peace.